How do we reconcile the doctrine of predestination with the doctrine of probation? All right, let me say immediately, there is no such thing as the doctrine of predestination in the Bible. It is a doctrine among certain churches. It is not a Bible doctrine. Let me make that very clear. Predestination is not a Bible doctrine or foreordaining or whatever it may be. In other words, once in grace, always in grace. Or God chose you to save and chose others to destroy. Let's go to Matthew 25. Let me, let's reason through the word of God. Matthew 25. In verse 34 of Matthew 20, well, I'll pray again. Father in heaven, as I continue, let the Spirit be with me and all those listening. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Matthew 25, the parable of the sheep and the goats. In verse 30, now the shepherd sets the sheep on the right hand and the goats on the left. In verse 34, then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. What he tells the wicked in verse 40 and 41 is, depart from me, curse, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Now, let's reason. Jesus said, Matthew 25, 40 and 41, hell was prepared for the devil and his angels. Human beings are not mentioned. Which means we can argue that God has always determined that all human beings would be saved. Now, when you use the word determined, it doesn't mean he decided they'll be saved contrary to what they want. Are you following me? It is God has chosen. His will is he would love to serve, serve everybody. So in that sense, there's a, a predestination, if you want to call it that. I don't like that term at all. The Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, he, God, is not willing that any should perish. In 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. And so the Bible teaches clearly God's will, his desire, let me repeat, his will is that all people would be saved. So he has chosen us to save us, but we exercise our own minds. And so you read 2 Peter. Chapter 2 from verse 4, for if God spared not the angels that sinned, they chose to sin. And verse 5, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. So we go from the angels who fell to those in the days of Noah, to those in the days of Lot. And Peter goes through the history, and then he tells us they have forsaken the right way and gone astray. Verse 15 of 2 Peter chapter 2. And so God's, God's choice, his will, is that everyone would be saved. God has not chosen to save some and destroy others. He doesn't do that. God, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. The world, what does the world mean? Everybody that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever, what does whosoever mean? Anyone who chooses to believe. And so predestination is not a doctrine in, uh, in the Bible. God doesn't choose to serve, to save some and choose to destroy some. People destroy themselves by their choices. So God's desire is to save everyone. But he allows us to express our choices. When God made Adam and Eve, he did not make them to fall. He made them to live in the condition in which he made them. They chose to sin and went contrary to God's will for them. Jesus could have chosen to sin, but thank God he did not make that choice. We, we must live our lives with the understanding that God wants to save you, Dr. Denisha McCurchin. He wants to save Jonathan. He wants to save whoever's listening. God wants to save you. That's his original will. Now, will you cooperate with that will? That's the point, you see. We do not cooperate with God's original choice. He has chosen you for place in his kingdom. And so the Bible says hell was prepared for the devil and his angels, not for human beings. That tells us clearly God originally chose all human beings for salvation, but they made the individual choice to go against God, and some will be lost. And so Jesus prayed in John 17, 12, those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost but the son of perdition, meaning Judas. Judas was lost. So once saved, always saved is not a Bible teaching at all. Predestination is not a Bible doctrine. God does not predestine some for salvation and predestine some for damnation. No, he wants to save everybody. But Amen. some of us choose not to be saved. You know, you read Ezekiel 33, verse 11. 
saying to them, as I live, saith the Lord, I have no pleasure in the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways, for why will ye die, says God? Why are you so determined to die while I'm so determined to save you, but I cannot force salvation on you? Why, says God, will you die? I want you saved. Why are you dying? People choose death. Uh, Proverbs 8.36, all they that hate me love death. And in that chapter, wisdom is personified. And wisdom there means Christ. All they that hate me love death. John 3, 19. And this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world. And men love darkness rather than light. They love darkness rather than light. That's the problem. God has chosen everyone for salvation. But we do not cooperate with his choice, with his will. And consequently, many will be lost. But there's no such teaching in the Bible as predestination in the sense that God has chosen John for salvation and Jack for damnation. That is not a biblical teaching at all. Nor is the teaching once saved, always saved. That is not biblical. Amen. Amen, Elder Skeet. And I, I just want to just want to read Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Here's mm -hmm. what the Bible says. For we are his, that's God's workmanship, mm -hmm. created in Christ Jesus unto good works, mm -hmm. which God hath ordained mm -hmm. that we should walk in them. That's right. Jesus yeah. Christ died for everyone. So mm -hmm. God has ordained all of us. He's given us all the opportunity to that's live right. out the life of Christ. Mm -hmm. And even if we were to look at Romans, Romans chapter 8, I know we, we love verse 28 where it says, all things work together. Amen. Amen. Where it says, mm -hmm. And we know that all things work together for good to them that mm -hmm. love God and to them who are the called according to his purpose. Yes. Verse 29. Here's where we get a little trouble. Where mm -hmm. it says, for whom he did foreknow, he mm -hmm. did predestin pre predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many. But the question is, who did God foreknow? Every single one of us. Every single one of us. Mm -hmm. and all, exactly mm -hmm. and to all of us he mm -hmm. gives the opportunity to accept jesus christ right. as our lord and savior and this mm -hmm. is how we begin, begin to marry the questions that have been asked because in the beginning we asked what is the purpose of probation mm -hmm. why do we have probation what is it it's because god wants to give us a choice to serve him mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he wants mm -hmm. to give us the choice the question is as you said elder Skeet, will we cooperate with God's will. Mm -hmm. And we don't. 